you look at quantum physics, the physics of possibility, it's really talking about the spiritual aspect of ourselves because you couldn't explain a miracle, you couldn't explain a biological process, you couldn't explain a simple healing of a cut at this point without understanding the quantum model of reality. It's not enough to just have a clear intention because clear intentions have very little effect on the nature of reality. Most people don't know that they're moving in and out of the quantum field 7.8 times per second. That you're vibrating in and out of the field all the time and every time you leave, you disappear and when you come back, you, co you disappear and you come back with information. But if you go out as the same person, you don't bring any new information back. Are you with me? If you look at quantum physics, the physics of possibility, it's really talking about the spiritual aspect of ourselves because you couldn't explain a miracle, you couldn't explain a biological process, you couldn't explain a simple healing of a cut at this point without understanding the quantum model of reality. And that there are particles, which are matter, it's you and I, and everything in this physical world, and then there's energy. And that energy has a consciousness, it has an awareness. And that energy is a field of information that we are an extension of, that we have access to. And that we spend so much of our life looking outside of ourselves instead of looking inside of ourselves. And that we are really conditioned to look just for particles and matter instead of energy and information. And truly, when people reach the end of their beliefs or they're facing crisis in their life, that's the moment they start to turn within and start to ask the bigger questions. And if you were astute enough to look at this in moments of contemplation, if you were wanting to hide God anywhere, it would be a good place to hide. It would be within the human being because everybody's looking outside of themselves and we look for reasons to change and regulate our emotional states. Uh, you know, we think that things and people and, and external things will really fulfill emotions that uh, uh, we're trying to change within us. And that truly when we start to really investigate who we are and look to see how we do that and demystify it, I think once we start to demystify it, it can become a skill. And so Einstein was a super cool guy because he spent a lot of time inward and at 12 years old he asked himself this simple question if I ride my bicycle at the speed of light and I turn my lamp on I turn my headlight on will it go on and so he thought about that question every single day of his life every day of his life he would go out in a boat on a lake as a child and lay on the on the on the back on his back in the boat and look up at the sky and think about this and he was building models of understanding he was working his best to be able to figure out how light and energy were related. He did it for 10 years. He was possessed by the concept. And finally, he was working as a third-rate uh, clerk in a Swiss patent office, and he was watching this man fix the roof across the way. And he just paused for a moment, and he was watching him. And the moment he was watching him, he got this incredible vision. And he understood how light and energy were related. It was a very abstract vision. And it was so abstract and so dimensional that he had to go back to school to learn the mathematics to be able to explain what he saw. And his wife, his first wife, was an amazing scientist and she helped him with a lot of the mathematics. And so when Einstein began to figure it out, he narrowed it down to that one simple equation that E equals MC squared, you know, energy and matter related, and the currency converter is the speed of light. And so, it became very interesting because <clears throat> when Einstein published his papers on relativity, he didn't say like, hey, this person said this and this person said this and I'm going to footnote this person. Do this. He just said, ladies and gentlemen, this is how it is. And it rocked the scientific community because he didn't really need anybody else as a reference. He had a discovery and his discovery was so unique. And his brain really was wired for the understanding of light and light was the ceiling of this reality and so Einstein and Planck started doing these really interesting experiments where they were 
they were taking energy and they were putting energetic uh, impulses into metals. And what they were looking to see is if electrons behave the same way as the very large. In other words, when an apple falls from the tree, it falls in a very specific way. It fall, falls towards the center. It falls towards the larger body. So he, he reasoned, well, if we disturb electrons, and him and Planck were doing these experiments, if we disturb these electrons, then they should fall just like an apple falling from the tree towards the nucleus. It should be predictable, just like it's predictable in Newtonian physics and classical physics. Well, when they started disturbing the electrons, something very unusual happened. The, the electron gained energy, then it lost energy. And it gained energy, and it lost energy. And it gained energy, and it lost energy. And instead of it falling like a ball rolling down a hill, it was like a ball rolling down steps. And all of a sudden, they became very aware that the subatomic world, the very tiny, didn't behave like the very large world. And so then they started to look for the electron. They started to try to measure it. And everywhere they looked for it, it appeared. And when they turned their back on it and they no longer looked to measure it, it went from a particle that collapsed, called collapsing the wave function, back into energy. Now this was a revolutionary moment because this meant that subjective mind, your mind has an effect on the objective world. That mind and matter are somehow correlated. And though, so this birth of quantum physics came along, and this quantum physics experiments say that you cannot do a quantum physics experiment without an observer around. In other words, a mind always has, always has to be present because it will influence the outcome. You with me? So now, that invisible field of spirit, that invisible field of information and energy, somehow you, as an individual, can influence the nature of reality with your mind. So now, Einstein had a lot of trouble with this because he said, I, you know, God doesn't play dice and it doesn't work like this, but his brain was wired for light. And so he had the abstraction and he was getting the download of information, understanding the field of light. And the quantum physicists were saying, well, actually, there's a, there's a field of information beyond space and time, beyond light, where everything is unified. And you can take two photons that have been somehow related in a specific atom and shoot them to the opposite ends of the universe. And the moment you affect one photon at the exact same time, the other one is affected. So they were being connected or affected in a realm faster than the speed of light. In other words, it would take time if you affected one for the other one to be affected. But if they were beginning to be affected at the exact same time, they were connected in a realm beyond physical reality. Are you with me? And so when the movie What the Bleep came out, and we basically made an effort to show that your mind has an effect on reality, and that in order for you to begin to change your reality, you got to change your mind and change the way you live your life. And we wanted people to become inspired by the process of creation. Really, give it a shot. And that, that, that independent of your gender, of your race, of the color of your skin, of your intellectual ability, independent of your past, independent of your age, that on some level we are all divine creators and that these models of reality that have separated individuals have all been built on human beings living in a very limited state of mind. And so when quantum physics was born and the whole concept of reality began to unfold, uh, people started to really challenge the nature of reality and that, and that concept that you are somehow connected because you are made of photons and atoms and electrons, that on some level you are an organization, a community of 70 trillion to 120 trillion cells, and all of those cells are made up of atoms and molecules and chemicals. And all of those are working in a coherent form to express yourself as a physical body. But most people don't know that they're moving in and out of the quantum field 7.8 times per second. That you're vibrating in and out of the field all the time, and every time you leave, you disappear, and when you come back, you, co you disappear into that field of information, and you come back with information. But if you go out as the same person, you don't bring any new information back. Are you with me? And if you can begin to observe a vision that represents a future, and you can hold steadfast to that vision, and you can see that vision clearly in your mind, and every day you understand where you place your attention, 
is where you place your energy, then you would be investing your energy into the future. And the image that you see could literally be the template for trillions and trillions of atoms to organize into patterns of information called an event in your life. And so, but it's not enough to just have a clear intention because clear intentions have very little effect on the nature of reality. That the driving force that couples the, the co-maiden, the, the handmaiden to all of that is an elevated emotion. And so when you combine that clear intention with an elevated emotion, it is the elevated emotion that begins to amplify the field around your body. And in that moment, you become more energy and less matter. And if you understand then that the emotion then is the handmaiden to the creative process, that means that you would have to feel whole before your healing. That would mean that you would have to feel abundance before your wealth. That means you would have to feel awe before the mystical moment. That would mean you'd have to feel love before your new relationship. That would mean you'd have to feel empowered before your success. And that means then when we do this properly, then we're no longer functioning as materialists. We are literally function as quantum minds. And only when you're truly conscious and truly aware are you beginning to affect the nature of reality. And taking small moments of life to understand that when your consciousness merges with a greater consciousness, when you're connected to source, you will emulate the divine. And how would the divine live if it was you? Thanks for listening.